before the Lord And every nation of the earth rejoice Let all the trees lift a shout of joy For the Lord is King Let the deep waters of the sea resound Let every mountain, every hill sing out Let all the fields make a joyful sound For the Lord is King Uh, well, good morning and welcome everyone to St. Margaret's on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather again for worship. 
Welcome to those who are tuning in from uh, various places. I trust you'll be able to um, check out the, the details of the service uh, in the online website. We begin our worship by singing the first of our hymns, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. service and turned to page two. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. By grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. So let us pause in a time of silence to reflect on our relationship with God, our relationship with others, as we come to the confession. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and true heart. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us praise God as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. And we turn to the Collect for this 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Loving and righteous God, your boundless generosity exceeds all that we can desire or deserve, and you give to the last worker all you promised to the first. Liberate us from jealousy and greed, that we may be free to love and serve others in your service and in your service may find our true reward through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please have a seat for the reading of Scripture. first reading is from Exodus chapter 16 verses 2 to 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and to Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring it in, bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you should know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, They looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. 
Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. come now to the psalm said for this morning, Psalm 105, we'll say it by alternate verses. I give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Tell among the peoples what things he has done. Sing to him, O sing praises, and be telling of all his marvellous works. Exalt in his holy name, and let those that seek the Lord be joyful in heart. Seek the Lord and his strength. O seek his face continually. Call to mind what wonders he has done, his marvellous acts and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen one. He brought Israel out with silver and with gold, and not one among their tribes was seen to stumble. Egypt was glad at their going, for dread of Israel had fallen upon them. He spread out the clouds for a covering and a fire to lighten the night. The people asked, and he brought them quails and satisfied them with the bread from heaven. He opened a rock so that the waters gushed and ran in the parched land like a river. For he had remembered his holy word that he gave to Abraham his servant. So he led out his people with rejoicing his chosen ones with shouts of joy. He gave them the land of the nations, and they took possession of the fruit for which other peoples had toiled, so that they may do the statutes. Oh, praise the Lord. Come to the second of our readings from Philippians, which will be read by Sandra. The second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, verse 21 to 30. For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for well, that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction and of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks very much, Sandra. We're going to stand as we sing our graduate hymn, Lord, Your Word Abiding.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. And Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and at about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing idle here all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers, give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those who were hired around five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal with us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Father, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Please have a seat. As we come to this parable, this story about labourers in the vineyard, we need to back up to the end of chapter 19 because the setting for what we have just heard is in fact in chapter 19. So let me read you the end of chapter 19. Then Peter said in reply, look, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of his glory, You who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. So there's that little phrase, many who are first will be last and the last will be first. Sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? How can the last be first and the first be last? Throughout the Gospels, we hear Jesus talking about the kingdom and trying to communicate to people the character and nature of the kingdom and discovering in that, that it's very different from the kingdom of this present age. So the values and attitudes of the kingdom are in contrast to the world oftentimes. So Jesus begins this chapter 20 of Matthew, for the kingdom of heaven is like, 
And that's an important little introductory phrase that we find over and over again in Scripture. For the kingdom of heaven is like. He uses parables to explain what the kingdom of heaven is like. And we see with all the parables, think of some of the parables. You've got the, the good Samaritan as they hear that parable. There was the ways of the world. Samaritan lying half dead, good, leave him there. That's the ways of the world. But the ways of the kingdom is to take this man, put him on a donkey to care for him, to have compassion for this man. That's the ways of the kingdom. We heard a couple of weeks ago about a shepherd who lost a sheep. What's the ways of the world? Oh, well, we've got 99. Don't worry about it. It's not worth it. But the ways of the kingdom is, no, we go and search out for the lost. For they are of value. So I'd encourage you to think of all the parables, to go back and when you read scripture, remember that Jesus is wanting to communicate what the kingdom is like. And it stands in contrast to the world. And so he tells this little story. You notice that he agrees with uh, those employed probably at six o'clock in the morning for a day's wage. What is a day's wage? Well, there's actually a coin minted for that purpose. It's called a denarius. And it was the coin used to pay the day laborers. And people were paid day by day. There's the injunction in Leviticus, I think it is, where it talks about don't withhold the wages from the day laborer. And so, the workers said, good, we've got a day's employment. And off they go working in the vineyard. As we hear of others being employed, they are employed for whatever is right. Is there an expectation about receiving a denarius? Well, I suspect they didn't expect a denarius. They might have worked three quarters of the day. They might have worked half the day. They might have worked just one hour. What would your expectations be come the time for knockoff and being paid? If you've only worked an hour, what would you expect to get? Not very much. Or as I think uh, there's an old phrase, get pittance. Uh, very little. It's interesting that the, the landowner, the vineyard owner, goes out repeatedly looking for workers. He doesn't go and get whatever's around at six o'clock and leave it at that. He keeps on going back seeking laborers. And we're reminded of Jesus elsewhere in the gospel saying, for the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There's always room for more laborers. And God desires more laborers even up to an hour before knockoff. He doesn't say, oh well, we'll just have to get by on that. No, there are others to be involved in the kingdom. And so he goes out calling people. And then we have this interesting thing of the last shall be paid first. So here it's being lived out. What he says, uh, what he said that in chapter 19 is now being lived out in the end of this parable. And so the last are first to be paid. Can you imagine those hired at five o'clock their eyes lighting up when they're given a denarius. They're given a full day's wage for one hour's work. I wonder what the unions would have to say about this. And indeed, as it goes on, 
So everybody receives the same. And this is where the ways of the kingdom challenges the ways of the world. Because the ways of the world says, well, the more work you put in, the more you get paid. The more skills you have, the more you contribute, the more you get paid. Although I do wonder sometimes about some of these uh, company directors and the like who get paid more money than I will see in a lifetime for getting fired sometimes. And so the ways of the world are about get as much money as you can in this life. But of course we're reminded that there is a time of accounting. We're reminded of the farmer who had a bumper crop and thought, oh, I'm right now. I'll build bigger barns and I can sit back and take it easy. And what did he forget? This night, your soul is required of you. He forgot that the journey of this life is not about the material. It's not about the body, but rather it's the journey of the soul. And he had failed to attend to the journey of the soul. And this is what Jesus is trying to convey to us. Don't get caught up in the ways and values of the world. It's very difficult, isn't it? Now, we have some people who have uh, demonstrated this reliance on God. They have turned their backs on material things. Comes to mind St. Francis of Assisi. In, in more modern times, we have Gandhi in his life of poverty. Mother Teresa. Those who say, well, the material things aren't what is important, but rather it's our relationship with God. For if you want to be first in, your, in the kingdom, then you've got to get rid of all the things of the world. Now, as Jesus is saying at the end of chapter 20, uh, where he talks about leaving houses and brothers and sisters and father or mother or children for my name's sake, is he calling us to give all of that up? That we go and put our houses on the market tomorrow? No, but he's calling us to think about the attitude that we have to these material things, our attitude towards the relationships that tie us to various things and place the kingdom first. I think I've told you the story of a time when I left a good government job and took up uh, studying the theology. And my mum, who was a very devout lady, just could not understand why her son would give up a good government job and go off into ministry. And for a long time, one of the challenges that I had is to say, well, who am I going to listen to? Is it going to be the call of God or the call of mum? And so that was a challenge for me at one time in my life. Eventually mum came around and realised that the call of God was the better call. But there is the challenge and we recognise that people face that challenge every day. I'd encourage you to think of those who hear the call of Jesus from the framework of living their life as, for instance, a Muslim or, or even a Jew, an Orthodox Jew. For them, the call of Jesus is a great sacrifice, turning their backs on family, putting a priority, a value, on the kingdom. For if we are going to enter into the kingdom, then we need to put that priority there. And lastly, we hear that for all people, the reward is the same. Do you realize that 
If you live your life faithfully following in the footsteps of Jesus, your reward in heaven will be the same as Mother Teresa. Your reward will be the same as the apostles, the prophets. It's the same reward. They don't get more than what you will get. A denarius for everybody. For the ways of the kingdom is that it's about relationship. And that relationship is there for all people. And the values of humanity that pick and choose, that elevate some and diminish others, all that's gone in the kingdom. Because Jesus looks not at the externals, he looks at the internals. He treats all people as, a, as we say, an even playing field, a level playing field. So may we reflect on this gospel reading and how it shapes our lives. For that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants this story to shape our lives in the same way that it shaped the lives of the apostles all those years ago. There continues to be the need, the challenge of putting off the ways of the world, putting on the ways of the kingdom and in Christ Jesus, knowing that which gives life and life in abundance. For to go back to the end of chapter 19, those who do all of this giving up will receive double, triple, no, a hundredfold, a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. The rewards of putting priority on the kingdom are enormous. May we be a people who put off the wisdom of the world, seeing it for the foolishness that it is, and putting on the wisdom of the kingdom, and in that, finding life in abundance. Now to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be ascribed all might, majesty, dominion, and power, this day and forevermore. Amen. We turn in our order of service to page eight as we stand and together affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for all people and for the church throughout the world. Please have a seat or kneel as we come to the prayers. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith, receive the prayers we offer. We give you thanks, Father, for the nations of the world, and we uphold to you nations where lockdowns are becoming necessary with the resurgence of COVID-19. We pray for 
the people of many nations, for their leaders, there would be wisdom and courage. We continue to pray for those researching a vaccine for this virus. And we pray your understanding and encouragement upon their efforts. We pray for our nation, for our Prime Minister, the members of National Cabinet. We pray for our states in this time leading up to a state election. Help us in these coming weeks to deeply evaluate those who would be given responsibility for leading our state in the years to come. May there be truth and openness through this time of preparation and lead up to the election. Guide with your wisdom and power the leaders of the nations so that everyone may live in peace and mutual trust, sharing with justice the resources of the earth. Give the people of this land a spirit of unselfishness, compassion and fairness in public and private life. Father, hear our prayer. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. We give you thanks, Father, for the gospel entrusted to us. We give you thanks for those who have shared the gospel with us. And we pray for our neighbours, our families, who are yet to hear your call, your invitation to join in the harvest of your kingdom. We uphold to you the mission agencies of your church, especially the work of Bush Church Aid and also the work of the Anglican Board of Mission. We pray for Philip, our Archbishop, for Jeremy, our Regional Bishop. Guide, we pray, those who are exploring and seeking faith through these times of COVID-19. Send out the light and truth of your gospel and bring people everywhere to know and love you. Enable those who minister among us to commend your truth by their example and teaching. May we gladly receive and obey your word. Father, hear our prayer. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We uphold to you, Father, those who are in need this day. Those who are in need of your comfort because the circumstances of their life trouble them. We think of those who have fled, fled from their countries because of hunger, of instability, of persecution and war. We uphold to you those who are in need of your healing, your help in times of sickness, particularly mindful of those stricken with COVID-19. We pray for doctors and medical staff, for all those who give of themselves to help those in need. We pray your comfort on those who remember difficult times around this season. We uphold to you the people of Great Britain as they remember this past week, 80 years since the Battle of Britain. We pray your comfort on those who grieve the death of loved ones, especially praying for the family of Shirley Hamilton. And we pray for those who are sitting with their loved ones who are dying. We pray your comfort and encouragement on them. We uphold to you those for whom our prayers have been asked, especially praying for Lane Trevathan in the midst of terminal cancer, that your comforting grace would be upon her. We give you thanks for the recovery from those who have had surgery this past week. We uphold to you the frail elderly, Pam Murta, Iris Dean, Jan and Alan Gate, Alison and David Catherell, Bill Spring, Norma Clay, Gordon Clay, Val Parfit, and others whose needs are known to us. 
We commend to your fatherly care, merciful God, all who are in sorrow, sickness, and discouragement of any other trouble. Give them patience and a firm trust in your goodness. Help those who, are, who care for them and bring us all into the joy of your salvation. Father, hear our prayer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. We give you thanks for the life and work of your servant, Shirley Hamilton. We commend her soul to your care. We praise you. We praise you for all your servants whose lives have honoured Christ. Encourage us by their example so that we may run with perseverance the race that lies before us and share with them the fullness of joy in your kingdom. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these our prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the Christian family prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We come now to the greeting of peace. I invite you to stand. And in these days, our greeting of peace is now COVID safe. And so we greet one another with a holy wave. We are the body of Christ. The, is with us. the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We greet one another. And I encourage those who are joining us online to exchange a greeting by typing a comment. We come now to our offertory hymn. And Be Thou My Vision. One of my favourite hymns, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. As we sing, our offertory will be received. Uh, we don't take the plate around as we formerly did, but uh, those who are watching online, I encourage you to uh, use our online. Uh, opportunities for giving either through B points or through direct deposits into the parish account and you can find the details on the website at 4017 Anglican church. We sing Be Thou My Vision
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, making us in your own image. We praise you for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and rising to new life, offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore we lift our voices to praise you, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, gracious God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine, and pray that we who receive them in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, according to our Saviour's word, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may share his body and blood. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We who are many are one body in Christ, for we, for we all, all share, share in the, in the one, one bread. bread. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. We eat this bread and drink this cup to proclaim, to proclaim the, the death, death of, of the Lord. Lord. We do this until he returns. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Father, as we recall his saving death and glorious resurrection, may we, who share these gifts, be renewed by your Holy Spirit and united in the body of your Son. Bring us with all your people into the joy of your kingdom. Praise. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive praise and honor. Amen. As we come now to share in the Holy Spirit, I remind you that you need to hand cleanse as you come forward, maintaining COVID safe distancing. Uh, those who may be worshipping with us from other denominations, please be most welcome to share with us in the Holy Communion today. Let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send, Send us out, out in the power of your spirit to, to live and work to your, to your praise and glory. And glory. Amen. Please have a seat for a moment as we come to the notices. A reminder that September is the month for uh, bringing in the BCA money boxes uh, so that uh, they can be cleared. Angela will look after those and receipt those to you. If you'd like to take up supporting uh, Bush Church Aid, then also have a talk to Angela and she'll be able to uh, provide you with uh, one of the little money boxes. Would you believe it's only two weeks away till our next street stall? Uh, because we've got the challenge this month, or sorry, next month, of the Thursday, the first Thursday being the 1st of October. So we've got to hit the ground running for October. So if you can help out with cooking, plants, craft, uh, those sorts of things, then please uh, prepare those. May maybe even have a talk to uh, Fran or Kay or others about uh, what you're able to provide. As we come up to the fourth Friday of the month, we have our next fund for seniors. This is an opportunity for people who don't get out as much as they would like to, be it COVID safe or not, uh, give them opportunity of coming out. We'll have a Eucharist at 9.30, uh, followed by morning tea at quarter past 10. So if people would prefer just to join in the morning tea, they're welcome to do that as well. If you, if you didn't notice it already, the, the ramp at St Margaret's here is finally finished and we've got everything finished off and we're waiting on the certification for that. So that's a great milestone to reach after, I won't ask how many years of waiting, but I know it's a lot and it uh, certainly makes things a lot easier for people with any sort of uh, disability to access or uh, exit the church here. I'll leave you to read through the other details that you'll find on the pew sheet and uh, that's also available online. Have, have we got any birthdays this week? No one's volunteering so we'll presume uh, we've got a birthday in our family. Our eldest daughter turns a, a, a bigger number than I care to remember. Uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, and you should never share a lady's birthday, they tell me, so, or their age, so I'll say nothing. Uh, uh, Norma. Wonderful. So Norma's grandson, Matthew, is 21 today. So pass on our congratulations to him, Norma. Uh, I know that you are keeping Elaine Trevathan in your prayers. Uh, I'd ask you particularly to keep her in your prayers as this cancer is proving very aggressive uh, and the family have been asked to uh, keep close at hand. So please uphold Elaine. I visited her the other day uh, taking a communion and uh, while she is uh, diminishing in her health her spiritually, uh, she is uh, very grateful for all your prayers and uh, please continue to uphold her. We come now to the last of our songs, which is a, a traditional hymn, but in a very different sort of setting. So let's stand as we sing the last of our hymns, which is a movie file. But, but.
Go out in the strength of God's gracious gifts. Live lives worthy of the gospel of Christ. Stand firm in one spirit. Strive with one mind for the faith of the gospel. And may the power and presence of God go with you. May the call of Christ lead you into fruitful labor. And may the Holy Spirit fill you with the joy of grace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, everyone who's joined us online. Uh, we hope that you will be able to join us each weekday evening from five o'clock for evening prayer. Thank you, and God bless. Lord, we believe in one church.